Hello and welcome! My name is Lola and on this channel we're talking about learning real-life English. English as a second language, because I'm not a native speaker myself and I'm here to share my experience from real life living in America. Okay, let's go! This video is emotions part three because first two parts were so well received and I'm so happy to be making videos specifically upon your request. Let's go. So quick recap. In the first two parts, we were talking about emotions of anger, fear, confusion, sadness, excitement, being surprised, emotions of love, happiness, and being tired. So if you want to check them out, go find the links below. Today, we're talking about emotions of curiosity, embarrassment, worry, and emotions of optimism, which is great. And I hope you will use these adjectives and adverbs a lot. Let's go. So, emotions of curiosity. Of course, you can express with the word like I'm curious, but word number one to be wondering, or you could say I'm wondering. When we're wondering, we're starting to think about it with curiosity. Like, mm, I'm wondering if he's gonna come tonight. Or, I'm wondering why it takes so long. Or, let's say, mm, I'm wondering if I call them right now. Will they be able to pick me up? Whatever it is, it's like you got an idea, you start thinking about and you're curious if it's gonna work out, let's say if you're planning something, or even the slight interest could be expressed with this phrase, I'm wondering. By the way, don't confuse the words wonder, sound uh, same as schwa, wa, wa, wonder, I wonder, and the word wander. When we walk aimlessly, when like, you know, we're, we're wandering around the neighborhood. There are two different words. And for that purpose, the purpose of curiosity, we use wonder. Short, neutral, uh, uh, wonder. I'm wondering. Same as in the word wonderful. It's not wonderful, it's wonderful, wonder. The next word for curiosity is very popular, but I wanted to include it to give you some comments on that, is to be interested usually used with the preposition in. Like, I'm really interested in how to cook a dough for Italian pizza. That's very interesting to me. I'm interested if he's gonna call me or not. When we're interested, we're showing more focused attention. It's like more um, obvious. We're admitting it. Like, I'm interested. It, it is imp I'm not just wondering. It's not like just the thought occurred in my mind, but I'm interested. Like, he's interested in all kinds of information about crypto. <laughs> I don't know. I give a lot of examples. I'm trying to give you examples from real life, but you know what I mean? Also, this word is so popular and so widely used that if you want to sound more eloquent, like more sophisticated, I would say use different words. For example, the word intrigued. I'm intrigued. I love the definition. When we're intrigued, we're deeply interested in something with a hint of being fascinated and captivated. You know, when there is some kind of a mystery in it, you know? It's like we're drawn to it. We're, tr we're trying to, like, um, think and inquire and get into things, deeply interested in it, you know? And usually we use this word when we're talking about some captivating concepts, like, I'm intrigued to learn about all the mysteries of ancient Egypt. Let me think when I was intrigued last time. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I give you all examples about food. Um, the place I like, I was trying to order food from them. <laughs> and uh, in the system that they use online, um, <laughs> it showed that they're open, but I called them and they said like, oh, we're temporarily closed. So I was so intrigued, I started like researching more online. Then I found them in the, in the other system and this system showed that they're supposed to be open. But then I found the, the, the information that they're actually closed till the end of the month. So I think 
I was so intrigued. Like, so what is going on? Like, did they close the place? You know, like, are, are they on vacation? What's going on with them? Like, is it a mistake? So I was doing my little investigation because I was like so um, pulled in <laughs> to, to learn what's going on. Yeah, you could be intrigued by unusual results. Say, let's say you do some lab tests and then uh, you get some interesting numbers and you're like, you know, I'm intrigued. Like why my cholesterol is so low <laughs> since I eat unhealthy or something like that. Another super useful word to show the emotion of curiosity is to be eager. And I love this word because it's not only talking about the curiosity, it also talks about your enthusiasm. So when you're eager, you're showing big, keen interest in something and also an intense desire, enthusiasm to learn more. And this quality of enthusiasm makes it possible to use this word not only in the context of curiosity, even though it's applicable, but also in the context of uh, your desires to do something. You know, when we're eager to learn, eager to do, eager to research. Like, let's say uh, our boss told us like, oh, I have an announcement. And everybody, like, I'm so eager to learn about that announcement. Like, what is he gonna say? Like, is it some fun that is gonna happen in our company? Whatever it is, like, I'm eager. Like, I can't wait. I'm eager to see the results of my job application because I did good during the job interview. By the way, if you wanna practice, <laughs> that little ad, <laughs> oh, that's a great. If you want to practice job interview, go on Lola Speak app into our immersive series and practice phrases and words. And by the way, we made even a video on YouTube, so if you wanna test it out, go check it on our YouTube, and if you like it, go join our app. Lola Speak. So let's say you did really good during your job interview, and now you're eager to learn the results, like, uh, are you gonna be hired? Uh, did they like you? <laughs> Will they send you an email thanking and saying, like, you're an incredible candidate, like, we can't wait to continue, you know, our conversation. Recently, I had my first drum lesson, and I was eager um, to start learning drums, because I didn't know if, 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 if it's gonna be difficult for me, if it's gonna be easy. I didn't know if I was gonna like it or not, so I was eager to learn. Now let's move into the emotions of embarrassment. I feel those are very useful, even though myself, I feel like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty shameless person, but I feel the sense of embarrassment, it makes us human, you know? Yes, it's nice to be confident. We'll talk about that a little bit more, talking about the emotions of optimism. But when you're, <laughs> when you're experiencing some level of discomfort and you feel embarrassed, it's just, I think it's so human. It's so natural. And the first and very useful word is to be self-conscious. When you're self-conscious, you're mildly aware of other people thinking about you. Like you're nervous because you think what other might think about you or your actions. Um, it has the slightest tint of embarrassment, but I think about that as the next step from as the next negative step from being self-aware. So if when we're self-aware, it's a good quality. It's like we are in contact with ourselves, you know, like I'm self-aware uh, when I'm, let's say, <laughs> saying a joke and it's not funny and it's okay. Like, you know, I let myself be myself. For example, I'm self-aware. But when I'm self-conscious, it is the next step towards embarrassment. So I'm not only joking, let's say not funny, <laughs> but, I'm thinking, oh, that was probably a bad joke. They, they, they probably think, oh, Lola's not funny at all. You know, I'm, I'm self-conscious. I'm, I'm doubting myself. I'm kind of judging and a little bit assessing myself. Um, not a good thing. But at some point, we all become self-conscious. Sometimes the reaction of other people makes us self-conscious. So let's say, uh, 
<laughs> you're trying to ease the tension, and you say something, and nobody laughs. And you know that you had the best intention, but so now you feel self-conscious because like, you're like, am I hurting them? Did I say something that offended them? So you like, you become tense. I don't know why I had in my head all these examples. <laughs> I don't even joke that bad. For example, a lot of people are self-conscious about their dance moves. You know, they're kind of like, they're afraid of showing uh, their body parts moving, literally. Um, some people are self-conscious about singing or public speaking. So whatever gives you this light discomfort, you could use this word, you know, like, uh, like I became so self-conscious when he looked at me that way, like, is everything okay? You know, the next step of <laughs> feeling uneasy and, um, sort of out of place experiencing this next level of embarrassment is to feel awkward. I feel it's a step up from being self-conscious. When you feel awkward, it's literally, <laughs> you're already feeling this embarrassment. It's not yet that negative field of embarrassment when everything is like, ah, uh, but it's a clear discomfort. I felt awkward, let's say, when I showed up at a wedding and I realized that I didn't read a note about the colors and let's say everybody was dressed um, in beige and I was <laughs> wearing this red dress. Let's imagine this situation. You would feel awkward. You may laugh about it, but you will feel awkward. Uh, don't do it, read the notes. And by the way, we don't pronounce w, right? It's not awkward, it's awkward. Awkward, super simple, first ah, awkward. That's the transcription awkward. So the best example when people feel awkward is usually, let's say, you bring up an information that was told to you as a secret, you know? For example, don't tell anybody, like, you know, um, Sarah is pregnant, you know? And you meet Sarah, let's say, and you, you walk with this friend who told you the secret and you're like, oh, Sarah, I've heard you pregnant. Oh, your friend will feel awkward like it's gonna be so awkward so the next emotion of being um embarrassed is the feeling of being ashamed you see it has the word shame in it and shame is a negative word like we don't like shaming people <laughs> we like to be shameless but the word shame the feeling of shame has guilt in it when you're feeling guilty and embarrassed about something that you've done, that someone's done, you will feel ashamed. Sometimes we feel ashamed <laughs> for the behavior of our friend, you know? Let's say our drunk friend says something and we're like, oh my God, like I'm so ashamed. Um, I can't believe, even though we shouldn't because it's not our responsibility, but yet we wish the best. We could feel sometimes ashamed of our reactions. You know, sometimes it's easy to lose temper when some, like you're tired and somebody tells you something and you like just respond ballistically like, Bruh! and then you're like, oh, I shouldn't have, you know, I feel ashamed of my behavior. Last time, actually, I was late driving somewhere and <laughs> there's the construction workers on the road. And I usually pretty cool and calm, but that time, and of course, in Cyprus sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, they just like stop and they kind of close the road and they don't put any signs on how to like reroute. They they don't even like put any signs that is our construction. They just like stop the road. And at some point it made me so mad that they didn't like do it properly, that they didn't, you know, show you the signs of reroute, that this is a construction work so you know, so you can plan ahead, so you can find your way. While, while it still continues, I'll tell you the story. So, uh, and uh, I got out of the car and I was very emotional. Oh, and the way they closed it, they could, they could leave the half of the road open so you can sneak through, but they didn't. They were like, ah, la. 
And I got out of the car, I'm like, Rah! and I yelled at them, like, you can't do this, guys, you gotta put this on, you gotta... And they kind of, uh, rah, rah. so they just moved their truck, so I was able to drive through, and then I felt very ashamed, I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't have taught them. But yeah, we all are human, so I'm sorry. So when some people are ashamed, they become red-faced. When you're physically blushing because you're so embarrassed, you're visibly physically embarrassed. But also we use this phrase to describe our emotional state. You could say I was red-faced or I became red-faced. Sometimes we think we are red-faced, you know, we think that we're blushing, but in fact, we just, uh, we're experiencing this deep sense of embarrassment that is not that visible on the surface, you know, but it's very, very deep inside, like, ugh, deep sense of embarrassment. Usually we are red-faced when our phone rings loudly, let's say during a performance in the theater, ugh, the worst, like, ooh, instantly red face, like, you know, when, uh, and you're like, oh, fuck, they asked us to switch it off, but I didn't, or whatever was the reason. So I think it's very funny when people tell a lie and then they, they become red face, like they, they, they're instantly physically showing the guilt, the, re, the regret, the embarrassment. And it's very obvious. So, yeah, it's easy to choose just not to lie. Don't lie. So the next and the highest for today level of embarrassment uh, is expressed in the word to be humiliated. First of all, to be humiliated is uh, to be feeling this deep sense of shame and degradation, the most intense fo form of embarrassment. And um, this degradation part, you know, like when they made us to feel less, like to feel low, less than we are, like we're humiliated, humiliated. Like sometimes people get humiliated uh, by the criticism, you know, when they take it personally or they can't handle criticism, they can't handle like negative feedback. And instead of saying like, you know, fuck them all, they feel humiliated, they feel less than themselves. For example, yeah, I felt humiliated when my mistake was pointed out in front of the whole team. I feel like this feeling of humiliation is dangerous for men specifically. You know, I feel like sometimes, uh, cause men has more, I mean, it's a generalization. I'm sorry, I'm generalizing things to, for the sake of explanation. But usually, you know, like men ha have more pride. So <laughs> it, when you say something like some, whatever, the criticism, they feel you chip off from their pride. So they feel like humiliated if you give them comments. Let's say you lied, you became red faced and somebody pointed it out, you know, like, oh, you're, you're blushing cause you're lying and then that's a humiliation you know you're you feel humiliated interesting enough uh, the whole word of humility humility and hear how i pronounce it humility not humility because it's two vowel sounds humility um, american english pronunciation challenge lola speak check it out so it's interesting that in american culture the word humility is usually used um, uh, as a virtue, as a description of a good quality of a person, you know? Humility, like humility is good. Um, if we go and read the definition, humility, the quality of not being proud because you are aware of your bad qualities. So here they give us the definition that it's, um, we're, not proud because we know there's something bad about us in simple words but that's not what is implied in american english sometimes sometimes i like i think that's the very very last definition and the very end of the list the lack of pride lack of pride so going back to the example of like you know i'm humiliated so usually say like you know he was a person of deep humility. He didn't have this pride, so it's a good thing, you know? 
Um, but to be humiliated is a bad thing. I hope you feel the difference. Now let's move towards the emotions of worry. Quick pronunciation tip. Uh, words like work, world, worry, uh, to pronounce them correctly, you could imagine that there is no vowel sound, that it's no like er sound, that is literally W and then R, wor, 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 worry, you know, worry. There's a lot of worries uh, in this world, you know? because of the work. <laughs> work, work, work. Work, 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 work. Okay, so word number one, to be concerned. When we're concerned, we experience the mild, lower-ish level of being worry. It's when we care about something or someone and it pops up in our mind, you know, this concern. Like, he was concerned that the weather would ruin his picnic. Very often, people are concerned about their health. So it's not like a big worry yet, but we have some signs or symptoms and like, oh, like I'm concerned, like, what's going on? Don't be, calm down. The next word is when we feel uneasy. It's a cool one, because first of all, it's self-explanatory. You know, we could feel easy, hey, hey, lie, or we can feel uneasy. It's almost like a heavy feeling inside. Uh, I feel uneasy about it. You know, sometimes you feel uneasy uh, walking home or to your hotel mm, late at night in a sketchy neighborhood, you know? It gives you the feeling of uneasiness, you know? Something like, ugh, what if something happens? So to feel uneasy is to feel slightly uncomfortable and um, nervous about the situation. Or sometimes, you know, if you, if you watch a lot of ghost stories and then you hear the noise and you're like, oh, it makes you uneasy, you're like, I mean, it could make you terrified, but usually it just, you know, we like pretend nothing has happened, but we, we are already uneasy. And the next level of that would be to feel tense. So uneasy, I would say, uh, first of all, describes our inner state. But tense describes not only our inner state, but our physical state. When we're already not only feeling uneasy, we're tense, we're like mm, ready. <laughs> so it's the body's physical reaction to stress and it indicates higher level of worry. Um, so usually when there's an argument, let's say there's a, a hot argument and people are about to get physical and everybody gets so tense because they're like, oh, are they gonna fight? Are we gonna <laughs> have to stop that? Like what's gonna happen? Or, oh my God, people get tense, let's say uh, in the airplane. So let's say you get into the air pocket, you know, or experiencing this level of turbulence, everybody gets very tense because everybody's like, buckle up, let's get ready. And yes, we can use this word not only in the context of describing our emotions, but also just in the context of physical tension. Let's say we've been working in the same position on the laptop and we got tense, you know, or uh, something made us tense, meaning like we're physically like, closing off ourselves. The next one is super simple, but I got to include it. Um, nervous. To be nervous. You know this word, like we all sometimes we get nervous when we're affected by some level of anxiety, you know, and uh, um, we're showing this greater level of worry. We're nervous, you know. He's like, he's so nervous. Usually mm, it comes with some behavior. Somebody like, cut like whatever bites the nail somebody's smoking somebody's starting pacing around somebody's like eating um so don't get nervous <laughs> don't worry be happy and the last for worry is to feel anxious anxious is clear like experiencing worry and ease nervousness in a significant degree the most intense form of worry I think you can get anxious. Some people just get anxious when a lot of things in raw happen um, and the situation escalates. So you're just like, oh, you're losing control and then you're anxious. 
Some people easily get anxious just because they're so emotional. They're not uh, emotionally intelligent, so they don't know like how to handle their emotions. They don't know what's happening with them. Some people get anxious before flying. Like, is everything okay? I have a friend. Oh my God. Oh my God. He, he was so anxious. He still, I guess, now he flies less because of the country's issues, whatever. Um, but he had to get himself so drunk that he's just like, ah, passed out because he was so anxious flying. Ah, uh, poor guy. And now let's talk about optimism. Yes, finally, nice, something nice. First of all, the letter O, but the sound ah, optimism. It's not optimism, it's optimism. And if you still struggle with recognizing the sounds, the letters, understanding it, come join our pronunciation challenge that will help you uh, to make your speech more clear, to be pronouncing the words the correct way so people can understand you. All the information is below this video. And first, is to be hopeful. When we're hopeful, we're having a general feeling uh, of something good coming, that something positive will happen. We have a hope, we're hopeful, we're full of hope. Like, I'm hopeful that things will get better soon. Like, they lost their dog, but they're hopeful that somebody will bring him back soon because they have good neighbors and he's been lost before. So we're hopeful, everything is gonna be all right. I think it's very important to stay hopeful. Such a good word. The next one is to feel encouraged. When we're encouraged, we feel supported and optimistic about something after somebody has encouraged us. I feel this one is a little bit stronger than a uh, feeling of being hopeful because when we encourage, it has energy in it. It almost like it makes us shift our perspective or even do some actions because we're, we had uh, this boost of energy. So now we're encouraged. Let's say um, you had bad experience, but after talking to your friend, you're encouraged to try again. Let's say you tried stand-up, didn't work out first time, but then you met a friend who's like, you know what, my first year sucked. And you're like, you know, I feel encouraged, I'll try one once again. Or sometimes we have a doctor appointment and I think it's so important to find the right doctor who will keep you feeling encouraged and hopeful no matter what, because it's all about the perspective. And if you don't feel that way, change your doctor. So, you know, I feel encouraged every time I talk to some specialist, because like, no matter if there is a problem, like I feel like we will work it out, you know? It's gonna be all right. So that will make us feel, next word, confident. Yes, and confident, it's not only about um, the description of um, someone's qualities, it's also about our emotions. You could say, I'm confident. Not saying that like, I know what I'm doing. It's more like, I feel optimistic and hopeful that everything will work out. I'm confident about it. I'm sure about it. <laughs> I have a strong belief and full assurance of the positive outcome. I'm confident. I know that will happen. I'm confident that we made um, the right decision. I'm confident he will get better. Like, how do you feel about your job interview? You know, I feel confident. I feel I did good and I'm sure uh, I believe in positive outcome one way or another. And the last but not the least is to be feeling positive. I know that the optimism kind of includes the positivity inside of it, but I want you to know that you, same way as with the word, with the adjective confident, to be confident, you could use the word and the adjective to be positive. Like I'm positive uh, about something. When you're positive, you're maintaining a positive attitude regardless of all challenges. Like he was positive that uh, his team would win. Uh, it's everything, you know, it's confidence, it's optimism, it's um, assurance, you know, he's positive. Like, I'm positive. I, well, I'm positive about a lot of things. So I wish you being positive, not only a positive person, but just to be positive about some things that you're 
expecting in your life. So those were emotions part three. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to practice pronouncing all the words that we've learned today, go jump in Lola Speak app, YouTube pack, and find emotions part three. We already prepared the sentences for you and our AI will give you feedback on your pronunciation and on how to improve your American English. My name is Lola and I'll see you next Friday. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Did you subscribe? Subscribe.